For years now, softwares like Substance Painter, 3D Coat, and Mari have slapped in the face of Blender on how easily you can create stunning car materials in them. To achieve this, they use many techniques with cool-sounding name like edge masking, ambient occlusion, and also position gradient. What if I told you that you can achieve the same results in Blender? Yes. Well, it took me eight days to replicate the same techniques. And the best part is that I have combined all of them into one single node. The node is so easy to control that even a five-year-old can control it. The result I achieved at the end of video are pretty insane. But before that, let's understand in a very short time why your car materials look bad and how a car material is actually created. This is usually what beginners do, add principled shader, then bump the metallic to 0.8, decrease the roughness to 0.1, and add clear coat. I mean, it's okay, but this is not the right way, and this is not what a car paint looks like. This is what it should look like. You see those beautiful flakes and a little bit of orange peel effect. And for those who don't know, this is what orange peel effect is. Now let's replicate it in Blender. I have already added a material to the car. Now am adding Voronoi texture to make the flakes first. I will change its scale to something like 2000 to make the flakes really small. Add texture mapping and texture coordinate node. Then plug the object of texture coordinate in vector of mapping node. I will add a normal map node, then connect the color of Voronoi to color of normal map, and then we'll connect it to the normal of shader. There you go, we have got the flakes now, but they are too sparkly, we cannot use them like this. So, let's decrease the strength of normal map. Let's try point one. Hmm, this looks okay, but let's try point zero five. Yeah, this looks good. Now I am changing the car paint to red for more precision. It will help us to see the orange peel effect easily. I will add a noise texture, then connect it to normal of clear coat and add a bump node in between. Plug the noise into height of bump node, then use the same texture coordinate in the noise texture. I am changing the scale of noise to about 1000 and bump strength to about 0 0.02. It looks much better. These are the results I got from our material. Look at those shiny flakes. That is what I was talking about. But this is nothing compared to the node I have created. This node setup has only limited control. The maximum you can do is edit the flakes or the orange peel. If you want to add dirt, paint chippings, or rust, then you need to add many more node and it can get really complicated. To solve this problem, I have created a shader that will solve all these problems in seconds. Introducing Principled Car Shader. It is very similar to the Principled BSDF shader. And the best part is that you do not need to UV unwrap the car, and it is completely procedural. It only takes few clicks to set up. Let's take a look on how you can use it. You can get both shaders from the link in description. By both, I mean the one we just created and this one. After downloading, you should have a zip file. Unzip it, and you will have a blend file. This blend file will have the shader. You can append it in your file. I recommend joining all the body parts of car together, but don't worry if you don't want to, we have a solution for that. Just follow along with me. But before that, let's take a look at our shader. This top part is the same as previous shader, but improved. Let's cover the basic factors quickly and then come to the interesting part. This top slider will control the metallic value. Second one will control the roughness. Third slider will control the orange peel, and the fourth will control the matteness of the paint. Now, the interesting part. Let's say you want to add paint chipping. Will you have to go through this kind of node setup? Well, not here. You just slide this slider, that's it. Magic! Now you have paint chippings without any effort. You can control the size of these chippings with scale slider. You have full control over it. If you slide the scale to 1, you will have a car with no paint, and if slide it to 0, you will have almost no chippings. The seed value will give you different chippings every time. It is just like the seed value in Minecraft. 
Now let's come to noise scale. It is little different than the previous scale value. I have created this demonstration file to make it easier to understand the difference between scale and noise scale. Assume this white part to be paint chipping and black as car paint. Let me decrease the detail a bit to make it clear. Now this scale value here is as same as the noise scale and the white slider in color ramp is same as scale of our shader. Basically, the scale value will control the spread of chipping and the noise scale value will control how big or small these chippings will be. I hope you have understood. Primer coverage, as name suggests, will control how much primer is shown underneath. If you don't know what a primer is, it is a base coat applied on all cars to increase the durability of paint. You can also change the color of primer if you want. Now the most important element, dirt, which is present on every car. You can slide this slider to add as much dirt as you want. You can see that it is already pretty realistic, but let me introduce you to some important controls. Let's start with edge randomness. It will control how much randomness will edge have. Basically, it will add or remove dirt from some parts of edges to make it more realistic. Now, edge clamping. It will control how much dirt will clamp to edges. Higher the value, more dirt will be attracted to the edges and vice versa. The last factor, bump strength, will control the bump of dirt. If you slide it to one, it will look like dirt, and if you slide it to zero, it will look like sand. Let's complete this with one last controller. The most important one for abandoned cars, rust. As you can see, there is only one controller we have here but there is more you can do with it because these paint chipping controllers works similarly for rust also. Now, you probably be wondering why this texture node is attached to our shader. Well, this texture node is the solution if you do not want to join the body parts or if you want a little more control. Here is a car with separated body parts. Now let's append our material first. Click on File, Append, and choose the location of Downloaded Blend File. Go to Materials folder in it, and there you will find our car material. Append it. You can see it has appeared in the catalog. Let's apply it to the car. I will change the color to blue. Let's add some paint chippings. Well, I didn't expect it to perform this well. But anyways, if you notice unsatisfactory results, you can add an empty, and then choose it as Object in Texture Coordinate node. This will give you some extra control, like you can rotate scale or move the empty to move the texture around. Thank you, everybody. I hope you like the work, and these are some results that I have produced with my shader.